This is a parametric EQ. And at first sight, it might seem a bit intimidating, but I'm going to simplify things for you by breaking it down section by section. And by the time I'm done, you should have a pretty good handle on how everything works. Okay, the first area we're going to take a look at is the frequency display window. This area gives you a visual on what's happening with the various frequencies, as you see here. It also provides some control points for making adjustments to those frequencies. But before we get into how the controls work, I'm going to simplify things a bit to build a basic foundation of understanding because by doing that, when we dive into making some finer adjustments later on, you'll be able to more clearly understand what you're seeing and hearing. So to begin, I'll get you oriented on a couple of things. The first being the frequency ruler here at the bottom, which gives us a rough idea of where we might make adjustments to frequencies. And second, the amplitude ruler over here, which gives us a rough idea of how much we're boosting or cutting any given frequency. And if you don't fully understand everything that I just laid out there, what's coming next should clear things up for you. Pretty much everyone is familiar with how controls on a radio work, so I'm going to use something close to that model to start the conversation, and that will allow us to easily navigate into the next lesson. Every radio has a volume adjustment, right? So let's bring up a mock interface and bring in a volume knob so we can make some adjustments to the volume and give you some idea of how that change in volume would be represented on the frequency display window. As I'm talking, you'll notice my voice is getting louder, and that's because the volume knob is causing an increase in volume across the entire frequency spectrum. If we look to the right, we can see just how much the volume has been increased, and the rise of the blue line indicates that not only is the volume being increased, but it's being increased across the entire frequency spectrum. In this case, the increase is 10 dB. And as the volume is lowered, all frequencies are lowered with it until we cross into the negative space on the display. And if we look here, the volume has been reduced by minus 10 dB. So now I'll bring the volume back up and split the frequencies between bass and treble only using these two new volume knobs. On the left of the display, we have bass frequencies. And as I'm increasing the volume of my voice on this half of the frequency spectrum, only the bass in my voice is increasing in volume. And as I lower the volume of the bass and cross over into negative space, you can hear that only the bass in my voice has been reduced while the treble sounds on the right side remain. So now I'll head over to the treble volume knob and do the same thing. As I increase volume on the right side of the frequency spectrum, you can hear that my voice has gotten much brighter while the bass frequencies remain the same. And as I reduce the treble volume and head into negative space, you can hear that my voice sounds very dull. And that's because all of the brightness has been removed from my voiceover. Okay, so this time I'm going to split the frequency spectrum into three parts and introduce you to a new range of the spectrum referred to as mids. Now, mids are present in most sounds and they contain a lot of important audible information for our ears to be able to hear a lot of the tonal qualities of any given sound. But too much or too little mids, just like bass and treble frequencies, can cause a less than ideal listening experience. So let's check out what mids sound like. As I'm talking, I'm boosting the mids, and I'm sure you're noticing that boosting this area of the frequency spectrum is causing a bit of a boxy tone, like you might hear coming from the speaker of an old wooden radio. And as I cut the mids, you're going to hear a lot of bass on the low end and a good amount of the higher frequencies, but clearly we have plenty of critical stuff going on in the mids because without the mids, it just doesn't sound good at all. Okay, so... Let's head back up and level things out again. And now I'm going to split up the frequencies one last time and talk about the five general EQ ranges. And then we'll dig even deeper from there so we can start looking at how we can target very specific frequencies to subtract some of the things we don't like from the audio and increase some other frequencies to improve the sound even further. So here are the five general ranges for EQ we have lows, low mids mids, high mids, and finally, the highs. Let's start with the lows and hear what they sound like when we add and subtract volume in that area. Okay, so I'm boosting the range between 20 and 125 hertz, and as you can hear, it's sounding fuller and fuller as I'm increasing the volume, and 
the lower the pitch of a voice or instrument, the more careful you have to be in this range because it would be very easy to overdrive the sound by adding too much on the low end. And on the other side of the coin, as I decrease the volume in this range, you can hear that at some point we've lost a lot of the natural frequencies that are in my voiceover and it sounds thinner than it otherwise would on its own. But making a cut in this area is sometimes helpful if competing with, let's say, a music track that also contains a lot of low end sonic information. So when it comes to mixing voiceover with music, cutting either the voice or the music bed in this range would be one way to get both tracks to play well with each other in the mix. Okay, so let's move on to the low mids. The low mids tend to have a lot of warmth and body, but can also contain a lot of muddy sounding audio. So sometimes making a cut in this area is the right thing to do, but for now, I'll boost up the low mids so we can hear what that sounds like. While I'm boosting, you can hear a pretty significant amount of immediate overdrive, and that's because a large portion of my voice print lives in this area. So it doesn't take much before things get out of hand and it starts to sound really bad. And on the other end, as I lower the volume in the low mid range, we can start to hear that it's pulling out far too much of what's called my fundamental frequency. And as it was on the positive side, when we boosted things up too high, we're getting another negative result because a significant portion of my voice lives in this range. And by pulling it down, it makes my voice sound much weaker than it otherwise would. So when dealing with voices that may not contain a lot of low mids, adding a little in that area can warm things up a bit. Or if you've got too much power going on in this range, a small cut will likely produce a better result when EQing the voiceover. And later on in future lessons, we'll dig deeper and narrow our focus on low mids even further to see how they can help us improve our audio. Okay, now on to the mids. Remember what I said about the mids sounding boxy? Well, now they're going to seem even more so because we've narrowed the focus even tighter. And anytime you're boosting or cutting around the 500 hertz range, you can pretty much expect the boxy or sometimes referred to as honk sound to be that much more noticeable when you make a change. So let's have a listen in this range and see how things sound as we increase and decrease the volume. As I increase the volume, you can hear that things are quickly moving toward that boxy sound I was talking about. And generally speaking, this is not a positive result, especially for vocals. And as I pull the volume down in the mids, you can hear that while it doesn't sound as bad as when we boosted the mids, it still doesn't sound very good. And that's because we're making such a big cut in this area that we're losing some of the frequencies we do want in the signal. But as we'll see later on, by tightening our focus on exactly just those parts of the ranges we want to either cut or boost, we can improve the signal without affecting too many neighboring frequencies. Okay, the high mid range is an area where we're very sensitive to cutting and boosting. So before I increase the volume in this range, just know that on the boost side, it's going to create some pretty unpleasant sounds like increased harshness, a very nasally tone, and increased sensitivity to any words that contain an S sound, for instance. And on that note, the kind of whistle in an overly strong S sound is known as sibilance, which you've likely heard of. And, and since sibilance is generally irritating, you may want to adjust your headphone volume accordingly. So I'll give you a couple of seconds to turn your headphones down. Here we go. Now I'm increasing the high mids, and as you can hear, the tone of the voiceover is increasingly annoying because it's enhancing the frequencies we're most sensitive to. So any ch sound I make, ch, ch or s, s sound I make, like snakes or spiders, will not be well received by the listener. So now let me slowly back this off so you have a little time to readjust your listening levels a little higher so you can hear what a lack of these same frequencies does to your ability to hear me articulate. And on that note, this next demonstration should make it pretty clear just how important this range is to humans when it comes to picking up speech and many other sounds that are important to us. So as I'm lowering the frequencies in the mid highs, you begin to very quickly hear how muffled the speech is, as if I'm speaking to you from the other side of something that's blocking the sound. And as I increase the volume in this frequency range, you can hear that my speech has become much clearer and it's a lot easier to make out everything I'm saying. 
And as I mentioned with other frequency ranges, we'll also narrow down the exact areas of this range where we can make some adjustments to improve the audio. Okay, now on to the last range known as highs. Increasing volume in this range will open up the very top end of the voice and bring out a sort of shimmer or airy quality as we increase the boost. But too much boost in this range can also cause problems, such as sibilance creeping in, which can also be found in the highs at times, depending on factors like the mic you're using or the vocal attributes of any given voice talent. And as I decrease the volume of the high range, you can hear the airy quality leaving the voice and sounding duller as I go lower with the volume. And people sometimes make fairly deep and wide cuts in this area to remove overly bright sounds, but taking broad strokes to cut frequencies in this range can often be a mistake because you can bury that airy quality I talked about, and humans generally find that quality to be pleasant. So when we hear too large of a reduction in this range, it can easily result in the listener perceiving the audio as having a lack of a certain quality that their ears would prefer to have in the mix. Okay, so those are the basics on the five general EQ ranges, and I'll see you in the next video.